Good morning, it's Beth Boyle, Iowa Trail Rider, and welcome to an unexpected cold snap in Iowa. <laughs> it's October and the weather has been fabulous. We've had 70 degree days and 65 degree days and temperatures at night have been in the upper 40s and I keep thinking I'm going to sneak another camping trip with my horses in. and um, But now we've got a couple of nights in a row coming um, in the 20s. And uh, it's it's time to winterize my horse. Trailer. So we'll be putting the antifreeze in, we'll be draining the hot water heater, we'll be getting all the food out, um, and then I won't show you, but I'm gonna do some special cleaning too to make sure that everything's spick and span. I hope you enjoy the video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm if you stay tuned until the end. And if I have floopers, I'll put them in at the end. I. I can just imagine that there'll probably be some. Um, but thank you for watching. So I've gathered my supplies things I'm going to need to uh, winterize my horse trailer. And I've wrote out my list of the steps that I'm going to do. Uh, so I've got a new anode for my hot water heater and I have plenty of RV antifreeze. If you're not sure how much you're going to need, just, just buy extra. Uh, so I've got a, a two and a half gallon and two one gallon jugs and, and that'll be plenty. I've got some baskets here for hauling stuff from the horse trailer into the house for the winter. I've got the right size uh, deep socket um, for my anode. Um, my anode um, happens to need a one and one sixteenth socket. I have <laughs> my reader glasses. <laughs> I am of that age. <laughs> and then some... Um, uh, old towels and paper towels. Uh, some of this can dribble or drip and especially um, taking the anode out of the water heater. The water that's in the water heater is going to come flowing out all over the place with lots of little chunks and junk and stuff. So want to be sure that it can clean stuff up. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get the stuff out of my refrigerator and freezer so that uh, it can defrost. I'll let it defrost as I'm doing some of these other things and uh, yeah, then it'll be ready to wipe out by the time I'm done. So I won't make you watch that stuff, but um, it'll be done in a flash. Yep, it's done. Didn't take long at all. And it's not too frosty, so before long it'll be ready to wipe all the moisture out of, clean up the last little bits of food and things, and this will be ready to just shut off and um, let go for the winter. So yeah, don't forget to turn it off. So draining the fresh water out um, is an important step to do. You don't want that in, left in your horse trailer. Mine has a plug to pull um, to open, and then I just put this big tub underneath it um, and make sure that I get all the fresh water drained out. Looks like my tub overflowed <laughs> a little bit. Okay, here we go. We are going to drain this hot water heater by removing the anode. But I think if I can do it, you can probably do it too. So key is to find the right deep socket. Um, and I don't know about your anode, um, but the one in mine um, takes an inch and a quarter uh, to get it out. Um, but it's got to be a fairly deep socket to get in there. I don't think you could get in there with a wrench, at least not with mine. So this is the cover for my water heater. It has this little tab here that if I pull this out and twist it, it fits in a slot that allows the cover to come off. So let's do that. I'll twist that and then kind of lift that cover right off. We'll just set that aside a little ways. Once I get this anode out, um, the water's gonna go out all over. So don't laugh if I get it all over me. I've got a, a dish pan um, sitting below here. And I also have a square bucket. Um, I'm gonna hold this up here and try and catch as much of the crud that's gonna come out of there as I can. But it always gets all over the floor. So do this someplace where you don't mind uh, it getting kind of messy. Okay, so this is the anode here. 
The rest of this is controls and um, uh, different things for the hot water heater, but the anode is here. Kind of get in here closer and show you that underneath there. It has plumber's tape around it to make sure that it doesn't leak, but that is what we're gonna take out. So I'm gonna put my socket on there. And we're gonna remember uh, righty tidy lefty Lucy. Let's see if we can get this baby to come out of there. I'll take a few turns. Hold that bucket up there just with my knees. See if we can get this baby to come on out. Yep. Here it comes. It's starting to leak water a little bit. Now that it's loose, I can get it with my fingers and out it comes. Get my, it's running kind of, water's running kind of all over the place. So between my dish pan that I set underneath it and this square bucket, we'll get a lot of it. It's uh, drooling down. Looks like I'm getting less than half of it in my bucket. <laughs> but yeah, this water will be out of here in a flash water all over the floor um, but it, it's not really too bad I uh, caught most of it and because this had been drained um, this summer once uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, debris in there uh, we get um, like I said we have really hard water so um, you can see there's some crusty stuff on this anode uh, usually an anode if it's used a whole season for us will be a oh, deteriorated down to not much so we replace these every year this one probably no more gunk than it's got on it i'm probably gonna put this one back in but i'm not gonna put it in this winter um now you can see uh that the water's done draining out of there what i'm gonna do is just lay this in here so that uh, i can put it back in um in the spring anyway um there you have it that's how you drain your hot water heater so here's my hot water heater, and you'll notice that there are uh, red water lines going to it and blue water lines going to it. The cold water comes into it um, at the, on the, in the blue lines. The hot water leaves on the red lines, and you can see that there's uh, three copper, not copper, brass valves there with turn handles on them. So these valves, like this one, when they are turned so that the, the knob runs the same direction as the line, they are open. So that one is open. And this one, for example, since it does not run the same direction as the line, this one is closed. See that one a little better? So that one is closed. And so when they're in this configuration where the top and bottom are open and the middle is closed, that's how you want it to run your hot water heater. It lets the cold water in at the bottom, the hot water out at the top, and the bypass valve is closed. So to winterize uh, the horse trailer, we're gonna do just the opposite. This bypass valve, um, we want our antifreeze to bypass the hot water heater. So we've moved it, the cold water valve, it is in the open position now. That's how I wanted it all summer so I could get cold water into my tank. We're gonna close that one like that. So now that one's in the closed position. So the antifreeze cannot get into my hot water heater. So same way with this at the top, um, the, the pipes that take the hot water out of the hot water heater, that valve is in the open position. We're going to close that one too, just like that. So now if we're exactly the opposite as we were um, to run all summer. If I zoom out here enough, this one's closed, this one's closed, and this bypass is open. And now that that one is open, the antifreeze can come in 
this blue pipe, it can go up to the red pipe and go out to the faucets and the shower and everything that uses hot water heater. Um, the antifreeze will bypass the water heater because we have these valves set in this way at this time. So this is real important to remember. Um, you don't want that uh, pink antifreeze uh, in your hot water heater. Okay, so we need to get to where our water pump is. In my horse trailer, my water pump is underneath my couch, which um, does not make it super easy to get to, um, to uh, do the draining um, of my water tank, which is done. You can see there that my water tank's underneath the couch and it is empty. And um, there is my water pump and uh, the hoses associated with it. Um, my all of my lines are wrapped in that insulation to keep them from vibrating. Um, and before we got this pump, uh, the lines when the pump would run would vibrate and make a thump, 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 thump noise. So that made them a lot quieter. Underneath the couch, I've got some lights set up there and I think I can get my camera in there to show you what I'm doing. But uh, here's something that I need. So my husband made up this tube um, it's got black hose on the end. I'm going to put this down in my jug of RV antifreeze. And this end, I'm going to put on uh, where my pump takes in fresh water from my fresh water tank. So I'm gonna unscrew um, the fitting that has the hose to the fresh water tank, and I'm gonna put this on so that when my pump runs, it's actually going to suck out of the RV uh, jug, RV antifreeze jug of pink stuff and pump the antifreeze uh, through my water lines. So this is real simple. Um, it's, let's see, he made this about, I would guess it's probably uh, 36 inches long. It just has the same kind of fitting on it uh, that my plumbing um, to my pump has. Unscrewing a fitting just like this that comes from my fresh water tank. But then literally, once I have that unscrewed, I'm just gonna screw this on the same place, tighten it up, and then um, put this hose down in my big jug of antifreeze. So yeah, it's important to uh, have a tube like this. You'll need that. So as you know, I drained my um, water tank here. This is the valve that lets the water out of the water tank. And now that it's drained and empty, all I have to do is push this down to close that drain. So that's down. So um, it's good to close that now so that at the, in the spring, the first time I go to fill up my water tank, I don't run it out all over the floor. I've done that. Okay. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. So here, out of the corner of my water tank, right here, comes a line that has a, a fitting on it. And this is the output from my water tank. Um, and then it goes to a hose here that comes to my pump. This is my pump. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unscrew uh, this fitting right here. And to remove this all from uh, my water tank, and I'm going to attach the hose that I'm gonna put my RV fluid in. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, I put some paper towels down in there. Because if I remember right, when I unscrew this, um, a little bit of water comes out of it. I just soon catch that rather than having it run out all over. So you might not be able to see this, but I'm just unscrewing this little pigtail water line that comes out of my water tank and it goes into this other one. So I need to pull this one out now. So this is the line to my pump right here. And see now it's free. And I'm just gonna screw onto it. Sorry if you can't see this, but this is the, the hose that my husband made. And I'm just simple as could be. As soon as I don't cross thread this, I'm just gonna 
Screw that on there nice and snug. Only takes a few turns. But there now, if you can see, I've got my tube on there. It's nice and snug, and I am ready to open up my jug of RV fluid. Okay, so I got my jug of RV fluid. This is a two and a half gallon jug. I'm use my knife and get the get the foil open on it. And then this is the tube that my the end of the tube that my husband made me. I'm just gonna feed that right down into the jug. And yeah, it looks like he made it a nice length so that the black part will all go down in there and then I can kind of set this right close here. And um, now um, when I turn on my water pump, uh, you'll see that the, the pink fluid will come through this clear part, go through my water pump and um, we'll start opening the faucets one at a time to pull the RV fluid through uh, each of the lines. So I'll leave this on here, put the light on it so maybe you can see it a little better. And we'll turn the pump on. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so the idea is to run the antifreeze, the, um, the pink antifreeze, through both the cold and the hot side of every um, faucet and the shower and the toilet. So when the pink stuff starts coming, sometimes there's air in the line and it goes like that and it blows pink stuff all over. So I have a towel um, standing by here so that the pink stuff doesn't fly in quite as many directions as it might. So I'm gonna try and kind of hold this towel up and turn the um, cold side on and run out clear water for a bit and then it'll run pink. And as soon as it runs pink, you can shut it off. Um, just wanna be sure that all of the, of the clear water gets run out and the pink gets run in. So as you're doing this, I'm also filling the trap for this sink up with the antifreeze. So we'll do the same thing on the hot side. We'll open it. It'll kind of spit and choke and run a little bit. And then there, it ran pink too. Let it run just for a little bit. Make sure that the trap for the sink gets nice and full, and then we'll shut it off. So now our sink um, is winterized, and you can see that it kind of leaves the some pink stuff in your sink. Um, don't worry about that. In the spring, it'll rinse right out. Okay, here's the bathroom sink. Same thing. We'll run it on the cold side. Let it run for a bit clear, and then start getting pink. I'm gonna kind of hold this towel up. Oh, there it went pink without choking, that's good. And now we're gonna run the hot side. We'll let that run for a while and make sure the trap for the sink gets full of pink stuff. So this hot side is going past the bypass in uh, that we did at the water heater. So yeah, there's plenty of pink stuff. We'll make sure that trap gets all filled up. Yeah. Okay. On to the shower. Okay. Same deal for the shower. Run the cold first. Run it on for a while. Here comes the pink stuff. There we go. Get that trap nice and full. And we're also running some antifreeze into the gray water tank when we're doing this, which is good. We'll put some antifreeze, of course, in the gray water tank, but now we're on the hot side. And the hot side will be done in a flash. Same thing for the toilet. No big deal. Let's turn the water on, let it run. For too long, there she goes. Turns to pink, let her in long enough that all the water's flushed out and all you guys pink in there. It'll take me just a second to unhook uh, the hose that went into my antifreeze tanks and hook my fresh water uh, pipe back up to my pump. So it'll be done in a flash. 
no mister here. We're just gonna dump a little extra in. Make sure my jugs are empty and my traps are full of pink stuff. So now that the traps are full, I have about a gallon and a half of the pink stuff left. So I'm going to split the gallon and a half between my black water and my gray water tank. And I'm just going to put it uh, right down the drain, um, either in the toilet for the black water tank or the sink for the gray water tank. And make sure that I've got antifreeze in there so that if they're, they're that little bit of water that we ran in, um, it doesn't freeze in there. Um, and damage my tanks. So, um, super simple. Uh, we'll just run it in there and it goes from a sink right to the gray water tank. Yeah, just like that. I'll do the same thing down the toilet and then the black water tank will have stuff in it too. And we'll be done in a flash. So there we go. Uh, the water system in my horse trailer is winterized. Took four and a half gallons of the RV antifreeze, and we've got the hot and cold water lines to each of the faucets in the shower done. The traps are full. The toilet has uh, the pink stuff run through the cold water line to it. So yeah, yeah, the, the water lines are safe for the winter. So the RV antifreeze won't freeze, but it can expand in extreme weather. So they suggest uh, that you, at each faucet, um, you leave them open. So that if that uh, pink stuff in your system does need to expand, it can get out of the system and won't harm your water lines at all. So um, good idea, just leave the faucets open. Eventually, I'll learn not to pack so much food, <laughs> but there's quite a bit left in the camper. So, uh, yeah, time to get all the perishables out. It won't take very long either. It'll be done before you know it. There you go. Perishable food. It's out. Okay. We did the bypass hot water heater. That's checked off. We pumped the RV antifreeze into the lines, that was number four. Number five was add antifreeze to tanks and toilets. I got that done. Um, remove all food and clean everything. Well, the food's out. Um, you probably don't want to watch me clean everything, so well, I won't put that on the video, but it is important to make sure that everything is cleaned up. So got that off the next thing. Uh, dry out fridge and freezer and prop open okay so my fridge and freezer um, I kind of wiped them out you can see here they're a little cleaner than they were there's always you know some some food dribbles and stuff um, these things can stay in here these are my reusable ice cubes and this is just an empty bucket that I used to put ice in but this is defrosted so there will be a little bit of moisture in here as you can see there it's wet so I'll make sure and wipe all of that out and then um, I'll leave this all propped open um, for the winter uh, so that it gets a chance to dry and not get stinky in there so yeah there we go another step done okay dry out fridge prop open check that's done Number eight on my list, move tack, hay, and feed to rodent-proof area. That too, I will do, won't make you watch that, so we'll go ahead and check that off. Don't wanna leave that stuff in the horse trailer. We don't wanna get uh, mice and you know different problems started in the horse trailer, so we wanna make sure that gets all cleaned out. And then the last one, um, power wash, the horse compartment, and exterior of the trailer. It's always so nice in the spring to come out to a clean, clean trailer. And that step's gonna have to wait for a warmer day. It'll be back up to 70 degrees this weekend. I'll pull my horse trailer out, power wash it, um, the, make sure all the poop and stuff gets blown out of the horse compartment and out of the worm floor, and uh, give it a bath on the outside and just back it back in and it'll be all tucked in safe for the winter. 
So my horse trailer is a 2004 four star. So it's likely that your living quarters will be different than mine and the steps that you need to take uh, to winterize it might be different. But hopefully this will give you some ideas and, and make you feel empowered to do uh, your own uh, winterization. And um, so this is how this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, it's tried and true way for this particular horse trailer and I'll bet your horse trailer won't be all that different. So it's done. Took four and a half gallons for my trailer of the RV antifreeze. But we've got the gray water tank full, the black water tank full, the hot and cold lines um, to each faucet, uh, the cold water line to the, uh, to the, <laughs> so there we go, took four and a half gallons of RV antifreeze and my water system and my horse trailer is winterized, uh, gray water tank, black water tank, hot and cold lines to the sinks, the shower and the <laughs> so the RV antifreeze um, can freeze and expand. Um, well, it probably doesn't freeze. Eh. So there you have it. That's how I winterize my horse trailer. I make sure that it's safe for the winter and it'll be ready to go in the spring because I'm excited, excited for that April, May time frame to come around again when it's going to be time to get on the road again with my horses, get some trail rides and some more videos going. But don't fear, uh, this winter I have stocked up some videos um, to keep you interested in my channel, give you some entertainment while it's too cold out there to ride. So please keep watching. And thank you for watching this video all, to the, all the way to the end. Makes a difference with the YouTube algorithm. Please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your buddies, and have a good, good day.